What's up, everybody? Welcome to Mastering Diabetes and On the Green Live. My name is Corey, and with me, I have Severus Kambata from Mastering Diabetes and also On the Green. If you didn't know, he was actually the guy that made it. Look at that. How you doing, How you man? doing Corey? It's always good to be with you, man. I'm so good. I'm, uh, you know, it's Friday and uh, it's, it's, it's Friday. I mean, I'm probably going to do some swimming because it's like, you know, summertime. Summertime's coming to an end. The kids are going back to school. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, we're going to try our best. What are, what are you guys doing today? Not, not tomorrow, not the weekend. What are you doing today? Today is Friday. What are you doing? We usually ask where you're watching from, but we don't want, we don't want to know that. You can tell us you're coming from Columbus. That's okay. We want to know what you're doing today. Hi, Leslie from Florida. Mm-hmm. Let us know. Sandra. Oh, good morning. Oh, it's one o'clock where I am, but Canada. Les- Leslie, tell us where in Florida you're from. Cause we're both in Florida as well right now. Oh, Rebecca's working. Yeah, we're both in Florida. Did you know that? We're in different parts. I mean, Cyrus is two hours away from me, but yeah, we're here. We're here. Yeah, don't worry. We're um, here. So as you continue to tell us what the heck you're doing, we want to let you know what we're talking about today. And that is snacks. Snacks are tough, people, because the truth is, if you are part of the Mastering Diabetes community, the Mastering Bi- Diabetes Coaching Program, we're streaming live on YouTube as well. If you are part of it, then you understand that a whole food, plant-based, low-fat diet is the way to go so say it again i said never heard of it what are you talking about stop it (laughs) so what we're going to do we're going to mention snacks that are low fat whole food plant-based okay and we've got a sheet that we're going to show you it's the red yellow green sheet our producer Bess is going to bring it up right now we're just going to give you a flash there it is ready flash there it is So there it is. We got a couple foods here that we're going to talk about. Of course, there's fruits, there's veggies, there's nuts, seeds, and beans, but we want to make sure that we're careful about what we're doing. So Cyrus, here's what I want to do. Yeah. I want to go back and forth and I want to talk about some snacks that are mastering diabetes approved and thereby they are omegreen approved because of course, omegreen was born from a need from our mastering diabetes community. No doubt. And, um, I guess let, let's just kick it off with you, man. You know, I mean, you're getting hungry, mm-hmm. you, you're you're working, and mm-hmm. you got to grab something. What, mm-hmm. what do you grab? Okay, so um, the question is, um, I mean, are, am I just sitting at home? You know, I have access to the kitchen, or am I like traveling? Am I on the road? Is there any like restriction put on me? I I, I want you at home. I don't I don't think people are doing a lot of travel right now. I might be wrong about that, but I, yeah. I, let's just say you're home. Mm-hmm. You're getting hangry. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, Laura, Laura Lee. Awesome. Greetings. Okay, cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, you can add hibiscus to your smoothie. All right. Sorry. We're going to get to the questions. I got distracted. Okay. Yeah. okay. We're going to go back and forth. You give me one snack. I'm going to give you a snack and, and we'll oh, we're going to have a snack off. Okay. Yes, Here we go. Off. Um, ready? Yeah. A banana. Number one. Okay. Why? Why? Okay. A banana back in the 1980s, there used to be this advertising campaign for Chiquita banana. And they used to say, quite possibly, the world's perfect food. And I remember looking at that back in the day, and I was like, man, is a banana really a perfect food? That's, I like that idea, right? So over the course of the last 25 years, as I've learned more and more and more and more, I've started to recognize that, you know what? Chiquita had it right. Yeah. A banana is quite possibly the world's perfect food for many reasons. Number one, low fat, plant-based, whole food, micronutrient rich, uh, carbohydrate rich, and uh, is grown in nature, doesn't require any processing, tastes like a million bucks, easy to get at the grocery store, very inexpensive. What What's better? Like name another fruit or food that falls in that category. Yeah, it's, it's pretty better. easy. It's portable. It's, it's nice. Have you ever seen those banana holders that you have that like put them in a nice hard case and keep them safe? Yeah, because if you don't put it in that, then they turn into mush and it's no they good. Do. They, turn, they turn brown, but it's okay. For sure. Okay, for me, I- I'm going to go with arugula. Here's why I'm going to go with arugula because arugula has this like really nice spice to it. Now I'm not saying you have to eat arugula by itself. Typically I would be making a smoothie bowl. Smoothie bowls are very quick and Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat my smoothie with a spoon as we always talk about, because it'll give me an opportunity to really chew that smoothie and really break it down, take advantage of, you know, the, the benefits of my saliva, breaking it down before it gets into my body. And, um, I just really like arugula. Now it's nutritional profile. I am not a, nutritionist, dietitian. I don't know anything about that stuff. So I'll ask you, Cyrus, why is arugula such a, a good thing to put not only in your salad, but maybe in your smoothie? Yeah. Okay. So this is a great question. Um, arugula is what is called a nitrate bomb. 
Okay. Ooh. So a nitrate bomb is actually a really important thing to understand. There are certain foods in the plant-based world that are called nitrate rich vegetables. Okay. Spinach, arugula, Swiss chard, and the fourth one I'm blanking on. Uh, uh, Swiss chard, hang on, hang on. Uh, spinach, not spinach, is it? Uh, I said that spinach, arugula, Swiss chard. Um, we're going to put fennel seeds into that category because they're also nitrate rich. Okay. All right. Here's the deal. You put nitrate rich vegetables, beets, beets is the answer. You put nitrate rich vegetables into your mouth. They go through multiple rounds of metabolism, unlike many other foods. As a result of that, the nitrate compounds turn into nitrite compounds. Okay. The nitrite compounds serve as a building block for a gas known as nitric oxide. Ooh. Nitric oxide is brilliant because nitric oxide is manufactured by the endothelial cells inside of blood vessels all throughout your body. Okay. When you provide the building blocks for nitric oxide, the endothelial cells, the single cell layer, manufactures a gas. Literally, it is a very small molecule of N um, bonded to O, nitric oxide. And the nitric oxide is effectively leaked out through the blood vessel, and it causes blood vessels to open up. So when blood vessels open up, that lowers your blood pressure, yeah. and it allows oxygen from the red blood cells inside of the, inside of the actual blood vessel to then permeate into tissues. Okay. So there are studies that actually show that people who, athletes in particular, they know this thing, they call it beet doping. So they will literally have a beet rich smoothie. You could also substitute um, arugula in for beets because arugula is nitrate rich as well. And if they do it one hour before they exercise, then when they exercise, their blood pressure is lower, oxygen delivery is increased. They report back that it's easier, they can go faster, stronger, harder, and they increase their performance. If you're not an athlete, I don't care. Do it anyway because it'll lower your blood pressure and it'll ha help more oxygen get to tissues with exactly where it needs to be. Wow, incredible. Uh, I have I have a snack and this is going to be something you can actually buy from the store, my friends. Mm -hmm. All right, this is, is going to be unbelievable. This is a packaged food that is Mastering Diabetes approved. There's a problem. Yeah. There's a problem. Yeah, Robbie told me about it. The problem is I don't remember what it's called. So I have to walk to my pantry right now. Do it. And I have to get it. Okay, so okay. In the meantime, just call for me about beets while I go get it. I'll be right back. Okay, so in the meantime, while he's going to get those beets, I'm going to give you another snack, which I eat all the time. And it's something that I recommend a lot of people do as well. And that is a can of chickpeas. I used to think that anything that came in a can was not smart to eat. But then I refined my thinking and learned a lot more and recognized that just because something comes in a can does not mean that it's actually bad for you. So you can go to the grocery store. You can get a can of chickpeas. And a can of chickpeas, hopefully it has BPA-free lining, which means that it's not carcinogenic. And if you eat one can, that gives you uh, something like 24 grams of carbohydrate, and you get all, another 20-some-odd grams of, I'm sorry, 70 grams of carbohydrate and approximately 20 grams of protein. Chickpeas are number one. They're very tasty. They're very inexpensive. They keep you full for a longer period of time, and they are micronutrient, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Micronutrient warehouse. Um bombs if you're Ooh, sure said that again <laughs> they got a ton of micronutrients in them and they're incredibly health promoting so if you like eating chickpeas and if you're a chickpea freak like me go get a can make sure it's low sodium make sure it's organic bpa free and that's another great snack beautiful all what right you got? Now, this, this is going to be a two for one okay now listen guys we normally don't push products like other than like just omelet green or fruits and veggies but listen this is a good one and robbie robbie told me about it so i'm going to share it with you guys i've loved it ever since i got it but it's a two for one in a sense that I'm actually going to show you the name of the brand. Okay. It's called Rhythm. All right. Nice. Rhythm Foods have beets in them. These yep. are beet chips. But there's a problem with this bag. Do you know what the problem is? It's right there. The sea salt flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is you're going to get the flavor that is not sea salt. You're just going to get beet chips. And when you look on the back, Bess, come back to me real quick. I want you to look on the back. If you are part of this world, there's something in there. You see it, Cyrus? Uh, organic to preserve fat. No, organic high oleic sunflower oil. It's oil. All right. So you want to stay away from the oil. And there is, this brand is good. It's great. I want you to go look for this brand, but I want you to get the regular, not the ones that are the sea salt. I got this on purpose so you guys can see. It's not opened, okay? But this is the one. So if you are in this world... I mean, it's only 160 calories. The whole bag is 160 calories, okay? So pretty good, but still, we want to try to stay away from oil, right? So um, let me ask you this. Does, does that company sell uh, chickpea, uh, sorry, do they sell beets 
in a bag that have zero oil in them? They do. It- yeah, the original mm-hmm. flavor has no oil. Robbie eats these all the time. This is like one of his favorite snacks. So got so it's got no oil and no salt together. That's correct. No salt, no oil, no nothing. It's just the oh. beet chips, just organic beet chips on the back. Um, yes, they have carrot sticks too. So that's a good one. Like quite honestly, guys, that was a life changer for me. Uh, you can make your own beet chips. That's amazing, Darla. Let us know how. Um, and yes, Dave says they make cauliflower and carrots. Our t- our audience already knows. Like they already know about this stuff. Uh, beer chips. Oh, I think he meant. I think Leslie meant beet chips. Because the T is next to the R, which is hilarious. I, I would love some beer chips. Can I have some beer chips? Um, orca chips. I don't know what that is. Like orca the whale? I hope that's chips. chips. Uh, I would stay away from orca. That. Orca chips? Don't, don't eat whales. There, there was a question earlier that got um, you know buried. Yeah. It was about can you blend nitrate-rich vegetables or does that lose some of the nitrate oh. power? And there it is from Susan. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Bess. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, as effective as chewing these vegetables? The answer is yes, you can absolutely blend them. So, you know, take arugula, spinach, Swiss chard, beets, you can put them into a blender, you can put them into a smoothie, you can put them into a soup, it's totally fine. Here's the deal. With so many of these foods, just put it in your mouth. I don't necessarily care if it comes in whole form or if it's a little bit blended, it doesn't matter. What's important is to get it in your mouth and get it in your mouth on a daily basis. And when you do that, that's when you derive the benefits from it. You can nice. geek out about whether blended is better than frozen, is better than fresh, is better than chewed, you name it. It doesn't really matter. Just get it in your mouth. Okay. I'm going to talk about snacks. Again, we're talking about snacks here. Something quick, something easy. Um, you guys know that these gentlemen are the self-proclaimed mango men. I mean, look, it is mango season right now, everyone. Get out there and get yourself an awesome mango. It's a great snack. And the truth is, is it an on-the-go snack? No, it's not. But I just said you're home. You're home, you're chilling, and you want to have a snack, go grab a mango, eat two, three, four of them. And the truth is like, you know how you like, you put the seed vertical and then you cut, cut, and then you peel, peel. Then Mm -hmm. you just jam that thing right in and just Mm -hmm. take it all off the seed. Yeah? 100%. Um, Yeah. And And if you're a 10 month old child, like my little daughter Indigo and you're teething, this is a really good snack for you because she gets to gnaw on that seed and it really like keeps her gums feeling nice and good. So if you happen to be teething right now, it's totally cool. A mango seed is a great thing for you. Amazing. All right, your turn. What do you got? Okay, what else? What else? What else? Um, here's another one. A small package of berries. Okay, so you can go to the grocery store and you can get one of these like little plastic packages that cost like three or four bucks. It doesn't matter what berry. It could be a blackberry. It could be a raspberry. It could be a blueberry. It doesn't really matter. Berries are awesome because number one, they're very antioxidant rich. Number two, they're very fiber rich. Wow. But number three, one of the best parts about berries is that they actually don't have that many calories per berry or per serving. And that can actually be a really good thing, especially if you're concerned that you're eating too much food and you happen to be gaining weight, which generally doesn't happen on a plant-based diet. But you can eat an entire container of berries and you can get full and you can feel great. And um, before you know it, you're like, great, I just ate, I don't know, 35 calories. It's like almost nothing. And uh, it really can... It's, it's a phenomenal, it's a very tasty snack. Yeah, I'm down. Okay, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about, you know, I have like beans on my list over here, but like the truth is like beans aren't a snack, okay? Beans are something you put in your dinner. What are you going to do? Pop beans in one by one? No, I'm trying to be realistic here, people. Yeah. All right, so um, I'm going to go a little bit more on the yellow side because this is a soy-based product. And again, guys, we're talking about green light, yellow light, and red light foods. You all probably drive, so you know what we mean. Green light all the time, all good, as much as you want. Yellow light, man, let's be careful. Red, completely stay away from, okay? So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to have Bess put it up on the screen, and I want you to screenshot it, okay? And to screenshot on your phone, if you have a new iPhone, just press the power button in the up volume button. If you have a computer, hopefully you know how to do that, shift command four or something like that. Um, you, you guys know how to do this. So we're going to leave this up for about 10 more seconds. We will show it later, but what I'm talking about is right in the middle there in the yellow soy products. And I'm talking about edamame. All right, Bess, come back to us real quick. So as you look at edamame, edamame for me is a, a wonderful snack. You can have it warm, you can have it cold, and, uh, they are just packed with protein, but I want you Cyrus to kind of like demystify the fact that it is a soy protein. And do you know how much soy you need to eat and consume to actually have a negative effect on your IGF? 
If you don't, I do. You tell me the number. I, I think the answer is something like, I think it's going to be like eight to 10 servings per yes. day, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Correct. Like, and that's a lot. That's like four or five whole blocks of tofu. Like you're not, you're not going to uh, be able to consume that much. And if you are, maybe you're a bodybuilder that's trying to gain, you know, a bunch of soy weight. I have no idea. But the bottom line is, is I don't want you to worry about that. But Cyrus, why is edamame a yellow light food? Why, why are people, people are probably like, what the heck? What, what is that? Yeah, right, right. That's a great question. Um, the only reason that edamame is a, a yellow light food <clears throat> is because it tends to have a slightly higher fat content than other beans or other legumes. Okay. Okay. That's, that's it. That's literally it. Okay. Is soy bad for you? Absolutely, freaking not. Soy okay. actually helps reduce your risk for many forms of cancer. Nice. Even though a lot of the marketing is that soy is going to increase your risk for breast cancer in particular, completely okay. false information. Um, they're fiber rich, they're extremely micronutrient dense, and um, you can eat them in a very lightly processed state by literally just steaming them a little bit. And all of that is great. So if you can get yourself uh, some edamame, go for it. Just recognize that it's got a little bit more fat content than some of the other beans, but it doesn't really matter that much. All right, I want you to give me one more and then we're going to answer a few questions. And then we're going to close this thing out so everybody can have a great Friday. Cool. All right, here we go. Today's Friday. Go treat yourself to a potato. Ooh, okay. I love I'm potatoes. I'm a huge right fan of potatoes. Man. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite potato, Corey? Um, I just like the uh, Idaho, like just straight up the ones you get in the big bag at the grocery store. Yeah. I slice them in half after I bake them. So I'll stab the holes in them and stuff like that, put them in the oven, 425 for like maybe 45 minutes. They mm -hmm. come out and you just put whatever toppings you want on top. And it's like your, your favorite loaded potato. I love it. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Like potatoes are so good for you. They're so healthful in so many ways. White potatoes in particular get a really bad rap. People say white potatoes are going to increase your risk for obesity and cancer and diabetes. Complete false information. It's not a true statement. So whether you're getting a russet potato, a Yukon gold potato, um, you could get a purple potato, you could get a red potato. It doesn't really matter. Whatever potatoes you enjoy eating, we highly recommend eating them. Now, in particular, when it comes to snacking, you can go get these things called fingerling potatoes. They're these small little, they're either like circular or sometimes they have like an oblong shape to them. They're kind of like red and orange and yellow colors. You can go get a, a bag from the grocery store that costs like, I think $2 and you can just bake them or you can uh, steam them. It doesn't really matter. And when you make them, you have, you end up with these little tiny nuggets that kind of like the size of cherry tomatoes. And you can just pop five, six, 10, 15 of them. And before you know it, you're a little bit full. It's a phenomenal snack. You can put some spices on top of them and uh, you're good to go. All right. I'm going to blow your mind right now. I don't think you're ready for this. You might hear a weird sound. So hold up, everybody. Bear with me. There's this TikTok hack that I saw. Hang on. Use my apple core. Okay. So uh, my friend, and I'm going to give some love to my friend Azure. Okay. okay. Azure has put together one of the best potato hacks that I have ever seen. Now listen, Azure is not part of the Mastering Diabetes community. So she does spray hers with oil. I want you to ignore that part. It's like a half a second. But what you are going to see here, absolutely going to change your life. You can't unsee this folks. I want you, you cannot unsee this, all right? So I'm gonna try to be all fancy and I'm gonna share my screen and it's it's as good as what I'm going to say here. All right, here I we go. I cannot wait. I've never Got seen it. it before. You are going, hold on, hold on. All right, so can you see this? You are yep. making fries, but that's not the shocker. Wait for it, wait for it. She's using an apple corer oh. to cut her fresh cut French fries. Like, oh my Lord. Are you joking? Now let's talk about this, Cyrus. What else can we use instead of horrible for you, uh, fat induced, veggie spray like what you know oil spray what else can we use okay so th first of all this is this is literally brilliant because we have one of those what, what do you call it an apple core it's an apple corer yeah so we have one of the, i've never thought about doing a potato with that's i cool. know i know I'm you know what they do this at in and out burger in california or wherever wow. in and outs are because they have this like massive press they stick a potato in there and they crank it down and it basically creates fries automatically that are smaller than that but it's the same concept Freaking brilliant. Okay. So what can you put on your fries instead of a bunch of oil and salt that's going to make them taste better? Or yeah. Make them good? Okay. I got a couple answers for you. I'm going to blow your mind. Number one, ready? Write this one down. The answer is nothing. Literally <laughs> nothing on your potatoes. Okay. Yeah. You yes. can basically use the apple core, turn them into French fries. 
Stick them into an air fryer if you got that. Put them into a pot of boiling water and boil them. You can steam them or you can just flat out bake them on parchment paper. If you put nothing on your potatoes, they still taste awesome. Okay, yeah. number one. Number two, if you want to dazzle them up with something, go to your spice cupboard. Get out things like paprika or black pepper or crushed red chili pepper or my favorite, best spice in the world, cumin. Okay. Some combination of that, put that on there, you know, um, dazzle them up a little bit, stick them in a, uh, in, on, a on a cookie sheet um, at, with parchment paper, bake them 20 minutes, come out, they taste like a million bucks. Okay. You do not have to get fancy. You absolutely, under no circumstances, have to put oil on your French fries. You don't. Yeah. You can still get that crispy texture. You can absolutely get that crispy texture on the outside, which is gooey on the inside with zero oil. And people who tell you that you have to put oil, it's a complete fallacy. Again, it's one of those like nutritional folklore things. Get rid of the oil and you're going to love yourself. I love this show. Okay. Like we have 250 people watching right now. Guys, yes. we love you so much. Thank you for being here. Like we're not, we're not selling anything today. Like we're not, we're not talking about any products. Well, okay. other than the, the, the rhythm snacks that I mentioned. Okay. Like these are, you know, beets. Just go get the plain beet chips. All right. Forget about the back ingredients. You don't want to get the sea salt or any oil. They're oil free. They're great. Robbie eats them, so they're Robbie endorsed. No, All right, no. listen, we're gonna take five questions, okay? Five questions, so I want our producer best. I know she's already starred several of them, but uh, we're gonna try to end this thing in the next five minutes, okay? So stick around, we're gonna get to your question. Uh, Bess is gonna put the question on the screen and then we're gonna address it. So Bess, whenever you're ready. Okay, why are people with diabetes told to stay away from bananas? Ah, I know the answer to this one, Cyrus. You want? Can I try? And then you, you tell me if I'm right or wrong? Take over, take over. Take over. Okay, the reason people are told to stay away from bananas is nothing to do with the banana itself. It has to do with what they eat prior to the banana. Nailed so it. if Absolutely. they eat a bunch of um, crap before, and I'll let Cyrus define what crap is, and then they eat the banana after, their bodies cannot actually process the natural sugars the way that they're supposed to, and it causes insulin issues. Now, I'm not a PhD, so Cyrus... You know, am I right? <laughs> you nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. Okay. okay. So what Corey is, is touching on here is very important. The world of diabetes is very myopic. It's very focused on one thing and one thing only, which is carbs. The, yeah. Ridiculous. Everyone will say, oh, don't eat carbs. Whether the carbs come from fruits or from potatoes or from breads or from pastas, carbs are bad for you. Carbs will make you fat. Carbs will raise your blood glucose. They'll spike your insulin. Don't have carbs. Okay. So first of all, that's the book that we wrote. You want to learn more about this, delve into that book. It'll teach you everything you need to know. Number one. Please don't use the word carbs ever. I hate that word. I absolutely hate it. It is not a carb. It is a carbohydrate rich food. There are many carbohydrate rich foods that come from the plant world, specifically fruits, uh, potatoes, root vegetables, uh, legumes, as well as whole grains. And here's the thing. If you eat those foods and if you eat a banana in particular, and your blood glucose goes up, it's not the banana's fault. Just like Corey was saying, it's because you have eaten a whole collection of foods prior to that that are fat rich and or protein rich. And when you do that, you develop a condition known as insulin resistance in the insulin resistant state. Eating anything carbohydrate rich, good luck. It's not going to work. Okay. So the trick is to not blame the banana or the mango or the bowl of rice or the black beans. It's not their, that their fault. You want to lower your total fat content. You want to lower your total protein content. And get it to a point where you're 15% or below of total calories for both of those. When you do that, then you can pour in carbohydrates like bananas and potatoes and any other fruit that you enjoy and watch as your blood glucose is rock solid because that insulin resistance thing is gone. You don't have to worry about it ever again. Guys, it can be so frustrating. All right. We, we, we know it can be very frustrating. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you guys. My mom is struggling right now. My mom. Okay. And so she, she says a lot of things that you might've heard. Let me know in the chat if you've heard this before, guys. I, I don't eat that much meat anyways. And, and when I do, it's not red meat, okay? Have you heard that term before? Oh, Have yeah. you heard, uh, I, I, I don't eat much meat, but I just don't ask me to give up my cheese, okay? Have yeah. you heard that before? Oh, yeah. Have you heard, you know, I, I'd love to like eat like healthier foods. In fact, I have like salads all the time, but um, you know, the salad dressing that they put on is, you know, Hidden Valley Ranch or something. And it's covered in garbage, just garbage ingredients, right? So my mom, I love her so much. She's trying to relearn about food. 
And the order in which you do things and the order in which you think about things and your day and intermittent fasting, maybe, maybe when you eat in the morning, when is it, you know, we have to relearn some of these things. So just know, like, it's all good. Like we, we got you guys. We, we understand. And that's why we're here. We're going to show up every Friday and we're going to help you as much as we can. Okay. No question. Uh, um, guess, guess who I just had a conversation with on the phone about an hour ago. My mommy. Corey's mom. <laughs> and we're going to, okay. Remember this date today is Friday, July 29th. Okay. Yep. So just call it August 1st. Who cares? <laughs> Six weeks from now, literally six weeks from now, we're putting her through our blood sugar transformation challenge. She's coming on the show. She's coming on the show. Yeah. So I'm telling you right now, she's going to come on this show six okay. weeks from now. So six weeks from now, we're going to get on the show and I'm going to have her recount her honest opinion and what has happened over the course of six weeks. Um, I think she's going to be a completely different person. I really do. And I'm very excited for her to participate in this challenge because there's a lot of people, again, she was operating under the mindset or still is that sugar is bad for her, that bread is bad for her, that potatoes are bad for her. And she's trying to avoid those foods. And I said, no more. We're not doing that. We're not playing that game anymore. You're playing a different game and you're going to get better results than the rest of the world. And just watch. You don't even know what's in store for you. Just watch. And she said, right. cool. I can't wait to make that. Listen, everyone, um, we're going to kind of start to wrap the show up. I know we said we do five minutes, but we got to stick to 1.30. Uh, we both got kids to pick up and we both got kids to take care of. We're dads, yeah, we're right. real life dads, okay? So listen, here's what I'm going to promise you. And I see Kathy's comment there. Plugging my whole food, plant-based, low-fat, SOS-free meals onto the chronometer, which is, uh, is that how I pronounce it? Is it chronometer? Yeah, that's right. Sure. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> okay, <laughs> it looks like I'm not getting anywhere near enough protein thoughts. Okay, Kathy, how can you get more protein? Um, Cyrus, I, I guess we could hit that one up real quick. That's our last question. Then we got to get out of here. Okay. First question, Kathy, how do you know how much protein is enough? That's my first question. Most people are like, I'm not getting enough protein. The answer is you are. Here's a simple calculation. Take your body weight in pounds, divide that by 2.2. That'll, that'll give you your body weight in kilograms. Once you have that number, I want you to multiply that number times 0 0.8. Okay. So your body weight in kilograms times 0 0.8, that many grams is plenty for you. So most people let's call, let's say, well, her name is Kathy. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, Kathy, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna act like you weigh 140 pounds. I have okay. no idea how much you weigh, but let's do it. 140 divided by 2.2 is 63. I take 63. I multiply that by 0 0.8. Boom! 50 grams of protein per day. That's all you're aiming for. 50 grams of protein is very achievable on a plant based diet. That's what you're looking for. Okay, so let's okay. do that. Beautiful. All right. So listen, everybody. I want to say thank you for tuning in. As always, if you like this show, if you want us to keep coming back, would you please leave us a comment? Um, Millie has asked if we could put the list up again, we're going to put the list up one more time. I'm going to, uh, leave us, uh, with this list. This is the green light, yellow light, and red light foods. If you want to screenshot that, that is it for you. Uh, this is part of the mastering diabetes program. If you want to learn more about mastering diabetes, all you have to do is go to masteringdiabetes.org and there you will find a little bit more information to how to help you. If you are struggling, if you're trying to incorporate a plant-based diet like my mom and you don't know where to start, then this is where to go. But you heard it here first, guys. My mom's coming on in six weeks. So, oh, bye, best. Oh, snap. Can't wait. We're going to say goodbye. And uh, we just want to thank you all. And uh, we'll, we'll always be here every Friday just for you on the Omni Green channel, on the Mastering Diabetes channel. Cyrus. You guys rock. Signing off. See you soon. Thanks, man.